What do we got here? Fish is on. What's up, guys? Joe Simons, it's like Diamonds here with Captain Peter Deeks and Luke Simons. What do we got here, Deeks? <laughs> oh, it's just a beautiful little, little snapper. snapper. A little tiny one. So we got Deeks fishing with live shrimp or a, a legit prawn. A little guy. And Luke with the power prawn. Luke had a monster trout on earlier. Yeah, what happened? What happened there, Luke? Uh, yeah, don't, want to, talk about don't it. want to talk about it. But lost the trout. That's all we're gonna say. <laughs> and we've caught a few other snappers, some jacks, and we're doing canal fishing. This is kind of canal fishing. Let's see what you got there, Luke. So that's the V Prawn Junior rigged on a little what eighth ounce? Eighth ounce. Yeah, I'll show you what Check I'm fishing in. with here. You know what's Deke Scott? So it is hard to beat the prawn, but we can't fish the same. So I'm using live shrimp, and what I like to do is pinch the tip of the tail off, and then hook my shrimp. You can go bottom up or side to side, but hook it down at the very end, keeps it streamlined. We're in some current. I've got 20 pound leader and a little quarter ounce split shot. Super simple, catches all kinds of fish, and this little creek and canal here has got sheep's head and black drum and trout and jacks and snapper all kinds of different fish so what we what we're trying to do is focus on the uh the edges of the canal fishing up under the mangroves you'll look where there's a tree that's kind of leaning over and that's what's going to hold the fish you're not going to find a lot of fish out in the middle they're going to be closer to the structure and most of the fish tend to be on the deeper side so this side over here is the deeper side of the canal Ooh, lost him Ooh. Oh, 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 broke me off. Oh, no. <laughs> Might have been the old blue fish. But we'll, we'll show you on a map in just a minute. But if you look, on this side, it's a deeper edge. It's a, it's a steeper drop-off. And the mangrove trees hang out over into the water, which provides a lot more structure and habitat for the fish. Versus on this side, you've got a shallower um, descent into the water. So it's a lot shallower against the structure and eventually it gets deep. But the fish are gonna be on the deeper structure side than the shallow side. So if you look at a canal edge and you notice that there's a beach and you can just tell that it's a little bit shallower, um, it might look like a good area. You might find some shoreline redfish, but the concentrations of fish are going to be on the deeper structure side. And so this is what we're focusing on. And when you cast, you wanna look for points. Uh, you can see how Luke just threw there. You've got a dead branch that hangs out. Those fish are gonna be under the points. You're gonna, you know, I tend to be tempted to cast up into these coves, but that's gonna be a shallower area with less structure. So if you wanna cast just up current of a point that sticks out and let your prawn or your bait drift up under that structure, that's gonna get you most of the bites. And this is about six feet deep here in the middle, right? Six feet in the middle. And then it just, it slowly gets shallower up on the edge, but it's probably four or five feet deep against this uh, the side over here. That's the depth that you want to look for. It's a little colder out today. It's windy and so we're moving back up into these canals and just working the edge and catching all kinds of fish. So mm -hmm. let me get rigged up here real quick. Yeah, so this is uh, canal fishing 101 on a windy day. We came out and it was windier than we thought it was going to be. We were going to go hit an inlet and say let's go back here and get a little protection just like this uh, boat over here is doing next to us and uh they're doing the same thing kind of hitting this deeper area they i believe they have shrimp over there as uh as well we've seen them pull up a couple nice little snapper but yeah you'll find black drum as soon as we got here i was uh, doing some casting before i got voted to be the camera guy for the day and uh caught some jack little snappers lots of fish down here I'm betting we'll catch a black drum. Love to see that big 24 inch trout come back up. Luke is gonna be obsessing over that all day long. What do we got here, all little smart fishing spots? Yeah. Here, all, uh... So before I get rigged up and get back to fishing, I wanna go to the smart fishing spots. And no, hope you text guys, messages coming in Hope here. you guys can see this. Can yep. you see that on there? Yep. Okay, so this, this dot here is where we are. And when you're looking for an area to and it fish. it happens to be a smart spot. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
You want to look for the deeper canals that connect through. So you don't want to look for a dead end. Let me zoom in here a little bit. As you can see, like this is kind of a dead end cove here. That's not an area that you want to focus on. You want to focus on these these little canals that go all the way through. Oop, Luke's on. Oh, something. Luke, Lukey's on. Lukey's on. What do you got? A uh, little snap. Oh man, Dink Award. We'll take one it. Board, one to one. All right. Here, yeah, we're prawn. All right. Yeah, a little bit of a glare on How there. How about it's that? Tough. Oh, that's, I know, yeah, that's, that's kind a little of bit hard. better. Just real quick, you can see that it's deeper on this side than this side. You can see the beach and the shallow water. And so you can tell that this is the side you want to focus on. And if you come up here, you can, you can see that it gets a little bit shallower up there. So that's not going to be as good. So picking your spots, focus on these areas where you can see the water's a little deeper and the mangroves and the dead trees hang out over top of it. And uh, we'll keep zooming out. And you can see that there's all kinds of little canals and different areas to fish. Um, I, I wouldn't fish that. You can see that it's a dead end. But this one here looks really good if we zoom in some. Um, but then again, now that we zoom in, we can see that it has a really shallow edge. So I wouldn't fish that once I get a closer look. But then again, you come look at this one and you can see that on this edge, let me zoom out a little bit more. Those mangroves stick way out into the water and it's deeper over there. So that would be a good canal to fish. But you just fish it like we're doing here. We've got the spotlight trolling motor or your anchor, or you can drift and you'll go down maybe 20 or 30 feet. You'll fish a little bit and then just keep bumping along. And cool. it's, it's a really fun way to catch a lot of fish and have a great time. Yeah, let me, uh, I'll pull up. I mean, the one foot contour lines is a great way. Let me uh, grab that real quick. Is another great way to find where the deeper spots are. So we'll hit one foot contour lines. So that's what it looks like. If you guys can see it, man, this glare is brutal. But once you have these one foot contour lines, that will tell you real quickly where the deeper spots are in all these different canals. Uh, really, really cool. Yeah. And regardless of where you live, this will hold all sorts of types of fish. So in this area here, we're fishing the Indian River. There's gonna be black drum, sheep's head, trout, redfish, snook. Um, you name it, it lives in little canals like this, especially when it's windy and cold. Hey Luke, you got the, the prawn junior? Okay. Natural color? And Deeks is going with the shrimps. So we got a new point to try up here now. That's gonna be good. And Deeks, I know uh, we did a whole canal fishing hey we did a whole canal fishing uh i think i had a big snook on it did you see it broke water uh-uh uh -uh. like crazy and they jumped and that was it oh, oh man yeah. Yeah, that's it's called it's called getting looped <laughs> <laughs> but uh remember though that we don't we have a whole canal fishing like course mini course that we did a while back that was yeah. really good that was super helpful yeah yeah if you're an insider member you have access to it so go check that out in the in the course area but it's called canal fishing mastery or something like that yeah i would definitely watch it if you if you just want to go out and have some fun take uh, your friends family kids out and catch a lot of fish that's this isn't about trophy fishing even though you might catch some big fish this is about catching a lot of fish but there are some tips and techniques that are going to help you catch a lot of fish so it seems very simple but you can come in here and catch nothing if you're missing some of the key elements. So you watch where Luke's casting. Cast placement is very important. See how he's casting up, just up current of the structure that sticks out the farthest uh, from the shore. So that's gonna be where most of the fish are going to be sitting. It's that 90-10 zone. And uh, you can waste a lot of time. Oh, 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 oh. Trying to put on a clinic here and oh, he's going right back to the same spot. So what are the other other biggest mistakes? You want to you want to fish a shrimp type of lure like the prawn or actual shrimp. Um, you want to avoid the old frozen nasty bait shop shrimp. You want to buy some fresh live shrimp. Make sure they're rigged streamlined and make sure you have the lightest weight 
possible to get your bait down on the bottom. So we have quite a bit of current, so we're using a quarter ounce. If there was no current, we'd probably use a little bit less of a weight. You, you want to avoid throwing like a big one ounce weight up in there. You want it to just gently drift down to the bottom. You can see how Luke's working this prawn. Very effective, catches every fish that's in here. Um, except trout. Except it, trout. You can't bring them in. But you, there, <laughs> there is a way, uh, a technique to retrieving that prawn or any lure that that's going to allow you to catch fish. Where shrimp, you just throw it out there and uh, it's pretty, pretty easy to catch fish with a shrimp. So or I, trees. Or trees. Just do a little pruning, nothing to see here. I get to talk smack, I'm not fishing. Part of the deal, Luke. Poor Luke. <laughs> I'm muted and get made fun. Yeah, he, yeah, he can't <laughs> even talk, he's got no mic. <laughs> he's actually doing a lot of talk and we just can't hear him. <laughs> he's cursing underneath he's, his he's breath. Like, <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, look at Deke's just getting right underneath that little mangrove line. You know, and we've done something similar. We were up in um, St. Augustine area, same deal. Wind was cranking and we went up in the little creek mouse and instead of mangrove lines like this, oh, Deeks is out. Oh, he's a little tiny one. Instead of mangrove lines, it was, you know, sawgrass and some areas with some massive oyster bars. Is that water? Ooh, Luke's that? on. Oh, no. Oh! Luke's on. Oh, man. Whammy. Got another little snapper. You got to weed through these small fish, which is still kind of fun, um, but you will catch some big ones too. And I don't know if you guys could hear it, but the, the guy that just passed us that was fishing up here on this next point, he said he had a massive snook on. So there's definitely some big fish back here. Ooh, big trees too. <laughs> got me excited there. I know, me too. Oh, there we go. Oh, Deeks is off. That's how you do it right there, folks. Luke's now fishing the shallow side. Seeing what he can catch. And are you are, are you seeing much bait back in here? Not much bait. Okay. Oof, lost him. So what There's are these a, fish there seems to be. Or are they just here for protection? Oh, they'll be, a, yeah, protection. There's a lot of food for them. So there will be a lot of shrimp flowing through here, little crabs, minnows, mullet. There is bait, but you're just not seeing it. So it's cold today, so the bait's going to be on the bottom. You can see them on your fish finder. Um, but the key is to look for the deeper water, little canals protected by the wind. Current flow is important, and make sure that, um, that you're kind of fishing that deeper side. And if you look, if you put yourself in that situation and you look on your fish finder, you're going to see a lot of bait on the bottom. And so that's where a lot of these fish come in these conditions. You grab another shrimp here real quick, Luke. In, in general, and I know we're in a unique area here specifically, but in different creeks, have you found that a certain tide is, is better? Um, it depends on where you live. If you live in an area that has heavy current flow, like Georgia, then you want to be in a creek with just a little bit of current flow. And where I live over here on the Indian River, we don't get much current flow. So you're looking for areas of like heavy current flow. So you can see the water is actually moving in here, but the tide direction doesn't make a big difference. If we, were, if we were to come into an area on low tide and you notice that there's a beach that comes out from the shore, there's not a steep drop off with structure in the water, then that would just not be a good place even at high water. So you want an area where these trees are always in the water, that's the habitat. And if you were to put a mask on, and a, like a snorkel mask, and swim way up under those trees, you'll see that the fish go 15 or 20 feet back up in there. And so when you're casting, you're, you're trying to get it as close to those trees as you can and hope those fish come out to eat your bait. But most of the fish are unreachable. And so if you get to an area where you're catching a lot of fish, sometimes you can sit there for a couple hours and keep catching the fish because they'll keep coming out for your bait. Um, and if you're not getting anything, keep moving because you're trying to find that, that heavy concentration of fish. So we're going to bump up here in a minute. We haven't caught anything good yet. And are you just letting it sit? I'm just here. letting it sit. Yeah, yeah, you can see there's like, there's a lot of little mangrove snapper at this particular spot and they're nibbling on my bait. So I'll, I'll do one more cast up here. And kind of show you what I do with the shrimp. So fling it up in there. Just up current of the structure, it's gonna sink down. You can see the fish already nibbling on it. Pull tight, wait for the good bite. Oh, 
Oh, that's a good one. Good ones always get off, don't mm, they, Luke? They sure do. Story of my life. They sure <laughs> do. Yeah. It's okay, Luke. Redemption's coming. That's what Luke always does. By the time you got the 41 inch snook? Yep. Oh, whoa, <laughs> Deeks is trying to hit the camera guy. Hey, we need to edit that out. Super aggressive. <laughs> no, there's no edit. These are live, baby. <laughs> See the good, the bad, the ugly. Deeks got excited on that one. He'd been hanging out with Bill Dance too much. That was a good hook set. We'll give it one more cast and we'll be bump up a little bit. <laughs> There's, it's hard to get past these little mangrove snappers, so we're going to have to find an area that's got a little less of them. But yeah, we were with Deeks, caught a 41-inch snook. I'm talking so much smack, it's towards the end of the day, biggest fish of the day, and what happens? Luke came in. Well, the, was it 43 or 45? 45-inch Something snook. crazy. <laughs> One of, the, one of the thickest snook I've ever seen. Don't talk smack around Luke. Man. All right, Either way, I, I was pleased. I was pleased as punch. I, it's fun to be part of a catch like that. And that was so that cool. Was exciting, yeah. And that was on light tackle. That thing had us going all over the place. Yeah, that was a big fish. That was cool. We had to chase him around that flat. All right, so what are we doing now? We're going to move up. So we're going to move up, yeah. So we were catching a lot of those little mangrove snapper. I'm sure there were some bigger fish there, but... That's all we were getting bites of. We'll move you up guys, to the next point. If you guys are listening, definitely come watch this video. Let's look at Oh, Luke, oh! Luke, go! <laughs> Nothing to see here. About <laughs> well, hit me. But uh, if you're listening, uh, watch this so you can get, get an idea of what it looks like on the water. Because chances are you've probably passed areas like this. Creek mouths, both residential. This one, is there any homes on anywhere on this? Little nope. stretch, no? Not on this one particular? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we passed quite a few coming There's, here. If you look at an aerial map where we're fishing here, we just looked at that smart spots map, you'll notice that these are all natural little creeks and canals, but most of them are very shallow on the edges. And this one in particular has a deep edge where the trees overhang. Oh, Luke's on now. Oh, nice little trout. Oh, redemption. <laughs> oh, <laughs> snook. No, Snooky. Nice. Good work, Luke. And guess where that was? Right here at this point. Just like you said. All right. Good job there, Lukey. The prawn strikes again. There we go. But I want to go back to uh, talking about picking the location so yeah. you don't waste a lot of time. Yeah, look how far back it goes underneath those trees there. That is, that is what you're looking for. So an area that has a lot of environment and then one area that's a whole lot better than everything else. So if you go back into areas that have a lot of residential docks and a lot of deep canals that are all the same, that's gonna spread the fish out and they're not going to be concentrated. You'll have to fish a lot of water to catch a few fish. If you find an area that is a lot better than all of the surrounding areas, then you're going to have that 90-10 zone and you're going to come in here and slay all the fish. Look at Luke! Ah, he's got the mojo back. Uh, we're gonna see right here on this little point. <laughs> little, little snook. Little small snooky. That's cool. The prawn. Let's Prawn's what, doing good work today. Let's see what Deeks can do here in the same I'm spot. trying to get some of those nice black drum, but it's not paying off for me. You get big uh, drum back here? Um, up to like 15 pounds. That's awesome. Yeah, they're fun. I like the black drum. Oh. Luke says, oh, I see where you're casting. You're getting little nibbles. Little, so we got little nibblers. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's all right. Yeah, there must be a bunch of fish hanging underneath this little point. But we weren't getting very many bites back there. We just bumped up a little bit and a whole different world here. But be prepared because uh, you never know when the next bite's gonna be a giant snook or a giant trout or big redfish. So be ready to pull them out of the trees, out of that structure. Sometimes you find yourself getting a little lazy catching these little fish and then 
you get the bite of the lifetime and if not ready for it, you'll lose it. All right, Luke found some hard ground there. Coming with me. Is that a little stomp? <laughs> Seven pound line is reeling in this tree. <laughs> what is it? Oh, it's a nice little stomp. Ooh. Luke's oh, it's oh, a. Oh, man. Oh, it's the Heck whole, yeah. It's the, the whole fish house is coming home. Dang. We'll have to go place that back where he found it. <laughs> Luke, <laughs> that's what all those fish are sitting on. <laughs> you put that on top of your truck, Christmas tree for next year. Oh, Deeks is on. Ah, man, I'm just, just slaying the little snappers. Whoa. Getting, that's impressive. <laughs> that's so impressive. Uh, but what is funny is like, you spend most of your time targeting really big fish, but mm -hmm. man, I've had, I have a lot of fun doing this. Oh, yeah. Action and. Well, that's what most of us want, just tight, tight lines and nothing worse when you have a day off, you finally get to go fishing, winds cranking, and that can make it tough. But this is always a great backup plan. And if, you, if you're gonna come do this and you're going to get shrimp and not use the prong, buy a lot of shrimp. You'll go through about 10 dozen shrimp doing this for- 10 dozen? Yeah. So we'll, we'll go through about 10 dozen having a, having a fun time with this. Man, you just love feeding fish. There's a lot of little fish down there to feed. Luke, how many prawn juniors are you going to go through? One. Just one. <laughs> Ooh. Now, I wanted to use the prawn, but I was told we have to change it oh, up a little bit here. Oh, we have to do that. we got to so do a versus. Kinda... Oh, look, look at Luke. Look at Luke. Oh, you dirty Man, little this snook you snook slayer. You dirty little snook slayer. <laughs> all that trash. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Another snook. Is that three? Yep. Man, Deeks, how many snook have you caught? I don't know. If you added all those snook up, though, they might not equal one of my mangrove snappers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. Yeah, it's, uh, it is very evident that you're going through a lot of shrimp. Look at the size of these prawns down here, too. I mean, those are big boys. Those are real prawns. I might just put a couple of those on the on the grill tonight. We don't use them all. You're ten dozen. Oh, let's see here. And so, what next? What are we gonna do after this? Bump down a little bit further. And yeah. See if we can get on another little knot of fish. Let Luke have a couple more casts. I, I meant like, um, w in, let's as assume we were going to try something completely different, oh, not okay. canal fishing. Like what else would you do on a kind of a windy day? So what we're going to do next is we have some big live bait. We've got some mullet and some croakers, and we're going to go and fish some windy sides of islands and see if we can't get some big trout and snook. Now it's a little cold, a little windy, but um, I think we can get some, some real big fish here a little bit later. And at least we caught a bunch of fish. If yeah. that doesn't pay off. It's to talk about why the windy side of the islands. So if you're fishing like this, then you want to be comfortable. You can find areas that are out of the wind. This is the lee side, the calm side. It's a lot more comfortable and pleasant. But if you're targeting big fish, if you're going to catch big fish. You're talking like trophy fish. Big fish, big trout, big snook, big redfish. They're going to be on the windy side and the calm side. But the calm side, they're much more aware. They tend to be there not to feed, but to sun and relax. If you get on the windy side, the windblown side, it's gonna blow bait up there. Um, the only reason a fish is gonna be in that environment is to feed because they have to be on high alert. If there's a shark coming at them or a dolphin, they're not gonna be able to sense it quite as good. So there's something that's got them there. So if I'm going to be targeting big fish, I wanna fool big fish, I will focus on the windy side because that's where you're going to get those big fish to bite. You're going to fool them. They're not going to sense the presence of your boat or your kayak, or if you're fishing on a dock, um, it's a little more uncomfortable for you, but you can cast farther and those fish are there to feed. They're there for a reason. So I find myself fishing those windy sides a lot more than the calm sides. That's great. That's a great tip. That's worth the, worth the price of admission right there. But that's going to be our game plan. We might mess with some triple tail, 
Got some good shrimp. Ooh, that looks like it had a little bit a little more. Little heavier. Yeah. I'm, it was a little heavier. I lost him. Rod tip went. Uh, I'm gonna down get a Luke out of harder. his out of the little Luke zone. He's making me look bad. There he is. Looks like I'm filming my own video over here. Need you punks. And so, Luke, why did you go with um, the open jig head there? Is that the? That's what I had rigged on. Oh, okay. <laughs> Luke's calling us shots. It was a pretty money cast. It deserves a strike. Oh! <laughs> Man. We had to get him out of his zone. Yep. Oh, Lukey. Yeah, look how far back that water goes underneath that. Yeah, I'll fish that one next. That tree line. But as simple as this type of fishing is, it seems like you can't really go wrong but there's a, this really is that like that 90 10 zone. So you're looking for areas that have a deeper edge, use your, your smart fishing spots out. And, um, and that one foot contour lines, like that's so helpful. Yeah. That we had, and even half foot contour lines, you can, in see one, one button, you can see exactly where the deep spots are. So do a little homework, map out, you know, a couple, four or five places that you want to fish the next day. So you're not out here just kind of unprepared and uh, just fish how we're fishing here. You bump down, catch a bunch of little fish, catch nothing, and then yep. the next spot, you're gonna catch a couple of big fish. All right, let's see, catch one more. All right, we're gonna. And we'll, there's another guy up there on that next point in a pontoon boat. So don't think that you have to have a fancy yellow fin to do this. No, I grew up fishing this way in my little John boats, and my kayaks and canoes. And yeah, and the guy before he was he was anchored up. He didn't have a nice trolling motor. He was sitting yeah, there. Yeah, anchor works anchored just and, as yeah. great. If you have a push pole, just stick your push pole down in the mud and tie off to that. You can be creative. You don't need a fancy trolling motor. If you if you see an area, if you're looking for black drum areas that have a big, like an Australian pine tree or a big oak tree that has fallen down into the water, that uh, that'll be a really good area that usually holds them pretty good. There isn't one here, but. It's got to be Australian pine, though. Huh? They like those Australian pines. <laughs> they really do. I wonder why. That's the ticket, though, huh? Find some... For cover. You're looking for fish cover. Trees structure. that are down. And in that case, you might want to use the Haas football and go weedless. The weedless. So we're not losing lures and jigs. All right, is that it right there? I don't know, I can't really get it in there. Oh, there Luke, another advantage of the prawn. I like to see the twitch over here. That might work pretty well. Skipping that sucker. Underneath here. Yeah, this area looks great. It's not producing though. You gotta stay out of the trees, dude. I know. Turn, turn that camera the other way, real quick. Uh, oh, wait, it's a little too big to skip. Uh, Luke, you're not getting any strikes either. Not in a little while. And I would have well, bet. Yeah. Uh, down my spot. But see how it looks good, and then nothing. Yeah. So just keep moving down. Don't be married to. Ooh, Ooh I saw that. <laughs> I saw that one. Something got gotcha. you. They're definitely down there. Canal Fishing 101. Do it with shrimp or the prawn. And we had Dr. Juice Saltwater Slam on there too. Kind of a given, but we always have to say it. And we're gonna do some videos on that, just the education of that chat with some people recently like oh yeah we tried it and it just didn't stay on very long because it's it's a liquid so it i think and i i heard the whole story that um pro cure when it first came out was just like that way back in the day and they realized that even though you could smell it and it was working they're like we got to change this formula just to basically fool anglers into believing that it's still on the lure that's why it's like a physical hard goo yeah 
And the irony is this Dr. Juice stuff stays on a whole lot longer as a liquid because it's bonding to the plastic or whatever you're using. And remember, fish can smell like 10 to 100 times better than a human, depending on the fish. Yeah, it doesn't take much. And if you can still smell it on your lure, that means the fish can smell it. Yeah, for sure. And that Dr. Juice, man, you get it on your clothes, you're smelling it for a week. I definitely notice a difference putting Dr. Juice on and not. Well, you've had a couple of your captain buddies who were kind of like yeah, rolling fun. their eyes at it and they started using it and they're like, wait a minute, that... Yeah, Spoon, uh, Power Prawn, Slam Shady. I mean, put it on everything. But what happens is you'll get a fish that's trailing that lure, like a redfish. You know, a snook and a trout, a lot of times they're just gonna, they're gonna bite it really quick, but some fish, they'll follow it. And if you don't have a good smell, they're not gonna eat that lure. Yeah. So what are we doing now? We're going back to the... I'm gonna go back as we keep bumping up here and we're just not getting the bites. It gets a little bit shallower. So uh, we got Luke back in his snook zone coming up. Give it a couple more minutes here and then we'll probably move on. Got to find some bigger and better fish, but, mm -hmm. but this is really fun. The 90 10 zone. It's crazy here. how accurate it is. I'm gonna go slot in the back here. Is this where you were catching those snook earlier, Luke, right? Right in that little spot? A little overhang right there. Well, at least the sun's out, gents. Yeah, it's nice now. Yeah. I Come on, Luke. Got out of the truck this morning. I was like, this is chilly. And windy. Oh, oh deeks. Hey, let's go up front. I want to try something real quick. Okay. So it's warming up and Luke was getting a lot of snook out of that little edge. And I think they're suspended up a little higher off the bottom. So I'm gonna take the weight off, free line a live shrimp up there. Huh. See if that, uh, see if that nails us something really good. All right. That's the real prawn. <laughs> That thing is a beast. Oh, shoot. Had to get in there before Luke did. All right, come on, little prawn. Oh, that was just dirty. So I can see it there. It's just He's gliding. probably going to come flying up to the surface here in a second. Gliding down. Oh, oh, oh lost him. All right, he's going to eat it again here. Man. Let me get up here so we can get the full vantage. All right, little shrimp, you still got a little life left in you. And so he's just letting it slide right underneath that tree. Come on, Snooky. There it is. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty cool. Oh, if Luke. You, Luke's if you turn on. that camera off, maybe we'll get some better fish here. Luke, he's on. A little snapper. Little snap daddy. Nice. All right, oh, Mr. that's Sean. a heck of a cast there. That deserves a strike. All right, let's see if you can pull a big one out of there. Free line in the shrimp. Oh, come on. It's going right in the... He's drifting in the right zone. Isn't right he? in the zone. Come on, shrimp. Oh, we swam to the top. Smart guy. He's a smart guy. All right, shrimp, come on. Ooh. That deserves a strike there. Look at him on the top. Can you see him? Oh, <laughs> he yeah. won't go down. <laughs> come on, shrimp. You got to slim down a little bit. Uh. Oof. Oh no. Oh no. The triple wrap? Quadruple. Uh. That's all right. All right, we'll end it on that one. End it on that one. Well, as you guys can see, canal fishing, 
<laughs> ton of fun. Lots of tight lines. Lots of tight lines, super fun. Quite a few different species. Lots of species. You catch a slam back here and uh, we're going to stay at it. I'm sure we're going to catch a lot of fish and yep. catch some big ones here too. So, I mean, if you want more of this and you're an insider member, go to the courses area and you'll have access to the canal fishing one. Yeah, it's a good little course. It's great. I recommend it. And, and we do residential canals, docks, so it's in, in some of this as well, but it's uh, <clears throat> super helpful. And there's a lot of it you can do on foot too. Yeah. A lot of people say, oh, I don't have a boat, I don't have a kayak. That canal fishing is perfect. So many of those are residential canals, uh, little areas that, I mean, you did the one that you found it on foot. That's it. It all, yeah. it all the, the tips and tricks, that all applies. And uh, it's just a great way to catch a lot of fish, catch some big ones. And if you stay at it all day, you're going to catch a lot of fish. Oh, yeah. Regardless of where you live. Yep. Cool. Cool. Well, comment down below if you have any questions. Otherwise, join us in the club. Whoop, whoop. Saltron.com. <laughs>